I think there are indications that it's moving to that direction. Uh, actually, one of the things that, that, and Rob and I have not debriefed on this, so you may hear different opinions. I actually was struck by the Stockholm Criminology Symposium that you would have a focus on desistance from crime, and you would have not only researchers there, but policymakers there. I think wouldn't have happened five, ten years ago. Uh, I just received an email from Larry Sherman this morning where he's talking about a police experiment that they're doing in the UK, calling it the, the Turning Point Project. Um, and so and I think here in the, in the States, with respect to the Second Chance Act, um, both um, President Obama and, and, and Eric Holder's, Attorney General Holder's, focus on, on giving offenders a second chance. Uh, I think there's an openness, there's, a, there's an opening. And, and at Stockholm, we ended our lecture with uh, basically the challenge is to see if criminal justice institutions can conceptualize and, in a sense, initiate turning points, be it through the police, probation, parole, corrections, what have you. So, so I'm actually encouraged um, by uh, what I saw there. The practice of criminal justice right now, I, I th think at least in the United States, is still heavily embedded in, in older models. And particularly when it comes to people coming out of prison, there tends to be an emphasis on prediction, like whether or not people will reform. And <clears throat> the notion that, well, if we have someone who's at good risk, then you know, they let them go, or maybe the, they're not so many services. Those men, that, and they're mostly men, they feel like they're high risk, they'll get services. But our research shows that that prediction is fairly poor, so that gives me some pause. Um, the other issue, though, is that, according to our work, desistance and turning points, it's not inevitable. So for a person to come out, there is the possibility of change. But I think our work suggests that current practices probably need to be modified to, to basically take into account the fact that at all moments, right, these turning points have to be supported, as does desistance. So in other words, it's not enough just to, you know, help someone get a job or give them counseling for marriage. It has to be supported and maintained over time. And so I agree with John that there's a lot of promising um, things happening. I guess the question is, will they be implemented in a way that's consistent with the theory and, and it, with what we think it takes? Because um, we did end the conference by saying criminal justice institutions have a role to play in turning points. But they're not inevitable, so it's a two-way street. Desistance is a process. I would also add that it is, there are multiple pathways to desistance. I mean, because we were asked repeatedly in Stockholm, is it marriage the most important turning point? Well, no. Uh, we happen to have, I think, the best data on marriage. We have both qualitative and quantitative data. It tells a consistent story. We've cut the data many different ways. The same results um, emerges. It's a robust finding. Uh, we believe it's causal. But I think the, the important message is, is that there are multiple pathways to desistance, and there's no one path that we must take. There's no magic bullet. There's no panacea. And I think uh, a, a large piece uh, of the next step would be to taking some of the findings and thinking really hard as to whether or not the conditions for change can be created within criminal justice processing of offenders. So what the UK experiment that, that Larry Sherman and Peter Nurwood are involved in is diverting offenders um, uh, and not processing them through the system. I'm also really interested in whether or not conditions of probation or parole can be adjusted to facilitate turning points. Uh, one of Rob's students and one of my colleagues, uh, David Kirk, just did a very interesting piece of research where he looked at Louisiana, and particularly men who were being released from the Louisiana Department of Corrections, but had no home to go to because of Hurricane Katrina. And what he found was that 
the men who did not return home did better than those that did. And that raises all sorts of questions about geographic relocation. Uh, how do you cut off offenders from their previous delinquent peer groups, uh, bad neighborhoods, and so forth? So I think it's a matter of really beginning to initiate a conversation, taking very serious the number of findings that emerge from our work. I would just add two quick things to that, uh, in, in the sense that I think the key is to take the conceptual points that we um, learned about in, in the empirical findings in our, our work and try to apply them to the current criminal justice um, policy setting. So for example, turning point, I mean, that's an abstract concept. But we tried to drill down and put forth, well, what are the mechanisms behind turning points? What's really going on? Things like monitoring, support, enacting new routines. You think about it, those sorts of things um, can be implemented in parole or probation, more consistent supervision, incentives to um, do well, um, support, let's say, for uh, not just crime or drug treatment, but perhaps the man um, needs uh, counseling, marital, there's marital strife, or it's a f conflictual family situation, um, child care, things like that. That may not seem, quote, criminal justice, but may, literacy. may literacy, learning. Um, these are the kind of things that um, really, I think, can be implemented with the current criminal justice system, and many of them are not. So we think that's an implication. The second uh, point I, I would just like to make is that the concept of turning points um, is not set in stone in the sense of what we looked at. It's entirely conceivable to me and likely that there will be new turning points that we haven't even thought of, right? I mean, we, military service marriage, but there are going to be other ones. Society is changing, or other ones may be more important as life course changes. Quick example, I mean, adolescence now um, is extended much more than it used to be. Kids are churning and taking more time off, age of marriage is later, that period between roughly 18 and into the 20s is, is different than it used to be. So those kind of turning points um, are being reshuffled. So we need to reconceptualize and anticipate new turning points.